All right, here we go. Episode 69 of Young and Eve. Finally, another English version. And uh, who are my guests tonight? Uh, my name is uh, Sultan Al Kasmi. I'm a uh, UAE based uh, writer and blogger. And Thomas. And me. Okay, I'm Thomas Wiegold, and I guess your viewers know me already. I appear regularly on Young and Naive, and I'm, well, the military guy for Tito to explain the stuff he doesn't understand. Okay, thanks. Um, the idea of the show should be uh, hopefully known to some people that I play a character who doesn't really know what's going on. So, Sultan, um, I heard there's something going on in Egypt. Um, tell, tell us about it. What, what, what's going on there? Well, there was a small thing uh, that took place uh, two and a half years ago. What, uh, what happened? There was, an, there was an uprising. An uprising? What, what, how does an uprising happen? Well, a lot of people went on the streets and said, we don't like uh, our leader. You know, it could be, a, could be a president, could be a prime minister, could be a king. We don't like this person or he or she, and we want to see the end of her. Okay. So that's what happened, or him. So they got rid of the, the pharaoh, or what was it? They got rid of the, uh, the guy who was there. He was a semi-pharaoh. He was there for about 30 years, and uh, he looked like he was going to be there for another 30 years. Okay, and, uh, and they overthrew him, right? Yeah, well, kind of. They kind of un overthrew him. Um, most of, I mean, what happened was that the military overthrew him. Uh, and uh, with, the, with, obviously, the presence of the people, but okay. there was a, there was this military that came into the ground and they got rid of him. Why why would the military do that? Because they felt that there was a lot of uh, anger in the streets and it was easier to direct the anger to to the to the president as an individual rather than to the entire military. Okay, Thomas, uh, explain to us why why uh, you just told me recently that the German army can never do that. Why can they do that? Well, the, the point is, uh, who is controlling the army? That's always a question in, in every country. And um, I, I would claim, or it's a hope, that in Western democracies, there are more safeguards in place to have control over the army. The army is not as powerful as in, in, in other states. And um, I think, Sultan, tell me if I'm wrong, I think uh, in Egypt, the military wields not only military power as such, but also kind of economic power. Uh, may I answer the question, Tylo? Yeah, yes, please. Well, the, it is said that the military controls between 30 to 40 percent of the Egyptian economy. This wow. could be an exaggeration. Wow. It could be an exaggeration. However, even if they control a quarter of the of the economy, it just shows you that they are a, a force, an economic force to be reckoned with. And wow. I feel yes, yes, and, and they they were they produce everything from water bottles to pasta, even the pasta that people eat. In Egypt and water and and uh, uh, you know all sorts of food and detergent, it's all made for uh, made by uh, by military factories and industry. Why? Why? Because uh, it, they have uh, uh, about half a million cons conscripts, so they can afford to have uh, labor, cheap, cheap that, labor, <laughs> cheap labor, and and the, the truth is they produce. Relative, relatively in Egypt, higher quality products. That's because they don't pay taxes. That's because they don't pay for the land. That's because they probably don't pay much for electricity. They can afford to, wow. to satisfy their employees. And then their supermarkets are subsidized. And so the Egyptians can go and buy in subsidized supermarkets. And then they, the, this relationship with the military continues. So the, the regular Egyptian is happy that the military is providing them with uh, uh, cheaper goods. Okay, T Thomas, uh, how much uh, does the German army influence uh, the economy? Uh, zero. Well, zero. Yes, except well, well, when they buy goods, of course, they they are consumer, so they influence as any consumer. But uh, if you compare it to 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 major companies like car makers or so, they have much less economic influence. Okay. So that's not a point in in Europe. Not in Germany, not in Europe. Okay. The, 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 the armed forces are not a part of the economy. Okay. So then, has this always been the case? Like, uh, have they always been this dominant? They have been this dominant since uh, the 1952 coup 
uh, that some people refer to as a revolution. Basically, Another Egypt. Coup. Yes, Another. Egypt has several coups, and today oh. was another one. We'll talk oh. about it later. But but Egypt had some kind of um, uh, monarchy that was installed by the Ottoman uh, Empire. They were Albanians, but they were installed by the by the Ottoman Turks on the Egyptian Arab Africans. Okay. So it's an, and they stayed there for about a, a century and a half until they were removed in 1952 by a movement known as the Free Officers Movement. And the king was exiled to Europe. And since then, the military has played a very strong role for about 60 years. Okay. And uh, wh why haven't they lost that control? Um, b because it became a military junta, it became a military regime. Uh, when the military uh, person, the, uh, Abdel Nasser and, uh, and, and the people with him, the, uh, the Free Officers Movement, when they came to power, they made sure that uh, parliament was uh, very friendly to them. Uh, they made sure that newspapers were very friendly to them. Uh, they made sure that there was no uh, credible opposition, even though there was a couple of parties, but they made sure that the opposition was one of those benign oppositions that really doesn't oppose you much. So, Thomas, it, it doesn't sound like a real democracy. Well, of course it's not. <laughs> I don't think so that anyone claims it is. Okay. But uh, I would like to know one thing, Sultan. Um, if we see situations like in, in Turkey, where the military sees itself as a guarantee of the state, of a functioning state. Is that similarly in Egypt, that the military says, whoever rules, we are those who guarantee the state will work, will function? How can, how can, how can they say that? Like, uh, how, can, how, can the army, how can the army uh, take that role? Uh, shall I answer? Yeah, please. Well, uh, basically, uh, Turkey has been an Ottoman, uh, sorry, Turkey has been a, a military, uh, semi-military state since the fall of the Ottoman uh, Empire 80 years ago, eight, yeah, is it 90 years ago, uh, since 1923, I think. And so uh, the military played a very important role until the last decade a new government known as the AKP came to power and they sidelined the military. In fact, uh, uh, a few years ago, they jailed a large number of uh, uh, mm -hmm. army uh, generals. So the, so the military was very, very powerful in Turkey until a few years ago. Uh, mm -hmm. Part of the process of the military losing power is, is the, uh, the hope of Turkey of joining the European Union. And so uh, there was some pressure from outside, but also the AKP was able to masterfully sideline the, the, uh, uh, the military. Now, the Egyptians, mm -hmm. where we are today, they sidelined the military in August 2012, or so they believed, the government. Why, why, why did they believe that? Because the military came back and uh, ousted the, the, the democratically elected leader today, just a few hours ago. Let, let, let's talk about that in a minute. Uh, let's let's uh, get back to the uh, ruling that has been going on for like 50, 60 years, you say? Yes, for about 70, 80 years, in fact, in Turkey. But, but uh, oh, what happened two, uh, two and a half years ago? That there, there must have something uh, happened. That uh, what, what happened? They they got rid of Mubarak, right? Yes, there was a there was a president called Mubarak. He uh, he uh, still alive. He's in uh, he's in jail now. Uh, he's in his eighties, and he was he was ruler from nineteen eighty one to two th to two thousand and eleven. So wow. so thirty years. Yes, wow. thirty years. And uh, people had had enough of him. And the reason is that the economy kept uh, collapsing. Unemployment rate is, is 12 and 13 percent officially, but it's much more. Uh, uh, the, uh, there are two million street children in Egypt. The, 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 uh, and, and then finally, that straw that broke the camel's back is that there was rumors that the president who was ousted, Mubarak, ousted in 2011, that he was trying to install his son to come after him. And oh. Egypt had done away with the monarchy 60 years ago, and wow. they didn't want to install a new person who can become a new monarch. So, Thomas, was Mubarak, was he a friend of ours? <laughs> well, uh, who is ours and what means a friend? Uh, the West. Uh, the, the West had, had close relations with, with Mubarak. Uh, of course, there were uh, arms deliveries also from Germany. Um, yeah, sure. Uh, we sell to everyone, all, almost everyone. Um, but um, no, the, the, the point is, I, I think the West was mostly interested 
in a stable Egypt, in a stable Middle East, or in the hope of a stable Middle East, um, and, and then it's not really important from that point of view who's in power in that country. Well, Which, of Sultan, course... Sultan. Uh, okay. Yeah, Sultan probably can explain much better. But Sultan. from a West, Western point of view, uh, well, we don't give a shit as long as it's a stable country. Yes, Sultan, Sultan explain to us, what is a stable country? Like, if, if you, you know the Western thinking, can you explain to us what a stable country is? Well, uh, a stable, there, there was, uh, there's a lot of trouble. I don't know if you know, but in the Middle East, we, no. we go through some, some, some wars every now and then. Really? And, uh, for the past, I, I, I never, I never, I never uh, keep track. For for, for the past uh, two thousand years, we've had uh, a, a few a few instances here and there. Oh. However, however, uh, uh, since uh, since the uh, the nineteen seventies and eighties, the, these wars have intensified in the Middle East. Uh, there were military coups, and uh, the, and then uh, militancy started, uh, terrorism started in uh, in in the Middle East, and so uh, some Western countries. Prefer to have stable uh, uh, Middle Eastern and Arab regimes that were at least uh, not not friendly, but at least uh, they were able to provide the the West with either the oil, the natural resources, uh, and uh, and uh, perhaps uh, buy buy weapons from these countries. So as soon as you change the regime, you do not know if the regime that has changed is friendly. And this happened before in the Middle East many many times. Uh, you've had a change in regime in Egypt. You had uh, you had a monarchy that was close to the West, and then you had a military regime that was not close to the West. You had an Iranian monarchy that was close to the West. Then you had a republic that wasn't close to the West. And so uh, there are many many other examples of this. Uh, uh, what about your country, where where you are? Where uh, you're from? Uh, I come, I come from a country in the uh, Arabian Gulf called the United Arab Emirates. It is a monarchy. It's made of, it's a, it's a monarchy federation. So it's a, it's a rare, uh, it's a rare example. There's only one or two other countries in the world I can think of. Malaysia is one of them. That's a federation, but it's also a monarchy. What, 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 what does it mean? That means that there are seven emirates. So there's seven little monarchies that came together and formed uh, uh, one country in 1971. Okay, um, Thomas. Any follow-up? Yes, yeah, I think we, we should come back to Egypt. Yeah, uh, yes. I'm, I'm still wondering, Sultan, from your point of view, uh, the military tries to give the impression in Egypt that they are executing the will of the people. On the other hand, uh, just this people, 52% uh, of them had voted for Morsi uh, in, in the last elections. So, uh, is this just uh, window dressing, or are they on the right track, given the public outcry about the, uh, the current government in Egypt? Uh, in, in 2012, in June 2012, uh, Morsi, the person who was ousted today, was yeah. democratically elected in Egypt, no doubt. He had, uh, I think, over, just over 51% of the vote. Uh, a large part of that vote had come from uh, civilian coalitions, including liberals, leftists, uh, even Christians, and some uh, uh, some revolutionaries uh, who stood with him on the stage uh, just you know a few days before the final election date, and he promised them to to fulfill their demands, to appoint a, a minority uh, a vice president, including a Christian, and including a uh, 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 a non-Islamist, and so uh, so. He one after the other, his promises, and he had made many promises. He hadn't kept them, and and so the Egyptians were frustrated. But then this is how politics are. You know, you promise people things to get elected, you don't keep them. Everyone knows that because these leadership, they don't know. I mean, we saw Obama promise shut down Guantanamo Bay <laughs> before he came to power, and then he forgot about it for four years, and then again he remembered it uh, uh, four years later. So oh, politicians. Nah, how naive of us. Exactly. But uh, with, 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 the, with the Muslim Brotherhood in Egypt, th they didn't just go, uh, they didn't just uh, not fulfill their promises, which is fine as politicians, but their, their, their government was so incompetent that, uh, that, that the, 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 the economy was collapsing even faster and faster. And um, 
can, can just, you can you can you give us a few, a few examples of why they are why they, why they were so stupid apparently? They were so stupid. For example, just a few weeks ago, uh, uh, you know, Egypt has the the tourism industry collapsed in Egypt. Naturally, you had a revolution. People were a bit apprehensive about going to Egypt. However, instead of uh, uh, attracting and uh, 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 encouraging tourists to come, one of their huge mistakes just two three weeks ago was appointing. Uh, 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 an individual who came from a, a, a group, a militant group, an ex-terrorist group known as Gama Islamiyah to be the governor of Luxor. And Luxor is one of the most important his, and historic uh, uh, cities in the world. It goes back thousands of years. They say that there is, I don't know what percentage of world history buried under the ground there. Tourists flock from all, flock from all over the world. And, and the even worse, Ty uh, Tylo and Thomas, um, there was an incident not too long ago, I think 1996, in which 52 tourists were killed by the, sa by the sa very same militant group that, this, that the president appointed an individual from. What? And immediately, yes, and what? immediately, <laughs> and immediately tourists started canceling their packages. People went out on the streets, protests against him. He what? would not remove him. Finally... Yeah. Did he, did he, I, they, they put a they put a terrorist into power or something? No, no, I shouldn't say a terrorist. He's okay. an ex. He 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 belongs to this ex-terrorist group, this ex-militant wow. group. I wouldn't say that he was a okay. terrorist, but he belongs. The ideology is from that group. Uh, okay. But that group especially was was implicated in that uh, that massacre. However, uh, uh, he, the president who was ousted today, never even removed uh, that, that that individual. What happened is that individual himself had the decency. To step down. Um, okay, uh, let's talk about the Muslim Brotherhood. Uh, we were um, talking about Mubarak. He was forced to step down. Uh, how did the Muslim Brotherhood get into power, and uh, why did the army let them? Uh, well, the Muslim Brotherhood is the oldest and most, uh, uh, most the best politically organized uh, party in the in the Middle East in the wow. Arab world. Wow. They were they were they were founded in 1928 under the monarchy, and they were uh, their their initial uh, mandate was anti-imperialist, anti-British imperialism in Egypt, and so they were quite popular in that sense that Egyptians wanted to end the occupation the British occupation occupation of Egypt. Uh, uh, they the, also the British, uh, the British were in Egypt. Wow. Yes, the British had occupied Egypt for uh, for for a while before ni before they were kicked out in 1952, along with the with the with King Farouk. Okay. Um, so they were they were there, they were organized, uh, uh, and then they put their hands together with the uh, military uh, junta, and it worked for the first four years. So 1952, 53, 54, 55, 56, from 52 to 56, the first four or five years, they were buddy best buddies with the military. And then the military turned against them, uh, and they've been underground for for decades until they were elected last year. Just like today, is is, is the same going to happen this uh, this time? Uh, uh, what do you mean? Like uh, you say, they, I mean they were best friends with the military, then the yes. military ousted them, yeah. and then yes, uh, they're yes, going to go yes, underground. Yes. They never learn. They never learn their lesson. So when they when they were uh, running for elections, they promised people because Egyptians were quite uh, were quite unhappy with the military that caused deaths of uh, of many people including the massacre of Maspero and and several other uh, uh, incidents that people had had died in under the military regime in Egypt that lasted from February 2011 until June uh, uh, June 2012 so in that yeah. one and a half year there was a military regime the muslim brotherhood then cozied up to the military regime they were praising it the president kept visiting uh, mm -hmm. And even yesterday, the president gave a, a, a big speech in which he wouldn't even criticize the military. He would criticize the opposition, and it was ultimately uh, uh, the military that ousted him today. Okay. So, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, may I, uh, Sultan? Now I'm wondering. We we had this cooperation of the Muslim Brotherhood and the military, which led to the ousting of of Mubarak. We had some co certain cooperation. We had an election where. Uh, more than half of the population voted for the Muslim Brotherhood, and now the military is ousting them. Uh, is um, a large portion of the population still on their side, or don't we know? Or uh, what does this mean for the followers, followers of the Muslim Brotherhood in Egypt today or tonight? 
Oh, this is a very, very good question. Now, it's a very uncertain time. Uh, these individuals, remember, they were voted by over 10 million people had voted for them. Uh, but that does not mean that uh, their entire uh, support base is 10 million. The, the issue is, and this is Egypt, so it is fascinatingly compl complicated. They, uh, the, milit the Muslim Brotherhood individual, Mursi, who was ousted today, was running head-to-head uh, -head with, with a former Mubarak prime minister. And so wow. Egyptians who just ousted Mubarak and didn't want to see him again, they didn't want to vote his last prime minister in, right. went, went and voted uh, kind of, you know, they, they swallowed the bitter pill and, sw and voted for Morsi. So mm -hmm. they might, they might have, uh, the, the, the Morsi obviously, ha or the Brotherhood, have a very uh, strong base behind them, but it could uh, go unto, into the several hundreds of thousands. Definitely not into the tens, uh, 10 million, mm -hmm. because had his support base been 10 million people who voted for him, then you would have had 10 million people in the street in the last uh, three, four days. No. Well, may maybe he uh, fucked them up uh, so bad that they didn't want to join them. I, I love that we can use uh, uh, such language. <laughs> of course, of course. Uh, so, so, uh, so the... <laughs> so, so yes, well, well, Mursi and the Brotherhood alienated the, uh, the other political parties. The old, even, even the Salafis, the, the, who are the, ultra, uh, the, the, orthodox, uh, the orthodox Islamists, even the Salafis stood by watching the Brotherhood fall and didn't, you know, they, they, they in fact, the only thing they did was uh, propose an initiative where there would be early elections. So they just wanted to get rid of the Brotherhood. So everybody had turned their back against them. The only two political parties that kept, that stayed with the Brotherhood until the very end, were, uh, were a party I called Brotherhood Light, known as Al Wasat, which is a fringe party of the Brotherhood, and uh, the Gama'a Islamiyya, the people who uh, remember from the Luxor governor, so his party, they stayed with them. Otherwise, everyone else was against them, ultimately. So is this, is this basically like two and a half years ago, uh, after Mubarak's uh, ousting, is it almost the same situation? There's, it's, there's not a clear way to, to go forward. The uh, Constitution is uh, uh, put out of place uh, currently. Uh, the military has, has the final say. Is, is, in, this, is this similar? In fact, you know, the, uh, today, the, 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 uh, ironically, the roadmap today is much clearer than it was in 2011. 2011, what happened was the military brought in the, uh, the, the, uh, the vice president, Omar Suleiman, who read a statement saying that Mubarak, the former dictator, has stepped down. Uh, and that was it. No one knew what's going to happen. No one knew who would be the prime minister. Today, uh, ironically, uh, it's be, uh, even though you had a legitimate president who was ousted, you have a much clearer roadmap uh, uh, because the military proposed yesterday and leaked to the news agencies that we will have the Supreme Constitutional Court uh, mm -hmm. uh, head to become the new president, uh, the interim president, that we will have a, uh, a leadership council, that we are going to change the, uh, the constitution that was written by the Islamists. It's a much clearer roadmap than the roadmap that, uh, of 2011. Thomas, Thomas, but, but, Thomas. But let, yeah, yeah, let me ask you, Sultan. It might be maybe a much clearer roadmap, but on the other hand, it's the roadmap given by the military. So, is the military a non-partisan caretaker here? Uh, probably, we talked about this in the beginning. They have economic interests. They have interests in where this all goes. So, will they use their power? to have influence on, on what will happen on, uh, in the political process. Or, 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 or to ask differently, uh, is the military the, the parents of Egypt, of, of, of all Egyptians, like uh, they have the final say no matter what? They're, they're definitely the most powerful uh, force in Egypt today. The Brotherhood uh, thought for a, for, a, for a minute that, that, they, that they were more powerful when they ousted the former uh, military uh, leader. Uh, um, in, in, in August 2012, and for a few months they really believed that they were the most powerful force in, in, in the country, but they had alienated so many people that the military was encouraged to get rid of them. And keep in mind, uh, going back to, you know, to your initial question, how much of the economy does the military control? The military controls perhaps a quarter, 25% uh, plus, at least, of the uh, Egyptian economy. And so as the economy continued to collapse, 
under this regime, the military uh, started losing more and more, and they, they, they saw their own uh, interests being affected. So it's not totally altruistic here, by the way. <laughs> yes, but are, are they non-partisan? Uh, will they have their own agenda? Or will they just say, we, we hand this over to the political process, and now it's due to the political parties to, to go ahead? Uh, they are definitely not, uh, not, they are definitely partisan, they are definitely uh, uh, not neutral. Uh, the, the military would rather not see an Islamist government. The military has battled Islamists for decades. Uh, wow. the, the, well, uh, in, uh, uh, initially, uh, under, under Abdel Nasser, uh, they had jailed uh, and executed and exiled uh, uh, Muslim Brotherhood and other Islamists. From the 1950s and uh, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, 2000s, for five, six decades, the military were, uh, were, were uh, uh, either uh, um, chasing the Islamists out, arresting them, along with the military police and the regular police. And so overnight, you had them going from chasing these, uh, these Islamists to actually saluting them and huh. following orders from them. So it was a very kind of unnatural feeling for them, actually. They were very disoriented from it. So, so, so you say they're not neutral as in they're anti-Islamist, or are they pro-secular forces? Uh, what what no, does it mean? No doubt the military is secular. They are, they're Muslim, a majority Muslim and minority Christian, but they are a very secular force. Uh, the, the, the military um, and the police uh, are not used to taking orders from the Islamists. The Islamists made them continue to make them uncomfortable. Hmm. No, as we, we are looking how this might evolve and will go on. You mentioned uh, it's not 10 million uh, supporting the Muslim Brotherhood, but uh, at least uh, a few hundred thousand uh, or maybe a few millions maybe. Uh, is there the fear or do we have to fear that there might be uh, not only a political process, but violence, because those who have been ousted from power, not only Morsi as a person, but a whole movement has been ousted from power. Will they retaliate? Will they try to take vengeance, uh, try yeah. to, to, to take influence? Excuse me, that, that'd be my next question. What did Morsi say? Did he just say, okay, you want me out? Uh, okay, bye, or uh, did he refuse? Uh, uh, yesterday he gave a speech in which he w mentioned the word, the word, I am the legitimate president, over 70 times. So some people say 74, 78 times. So he said, uh, in, one, in, in 45 minutes, he mentioned it 70 times, which is almost once every 30 seconds or 45 seconds. Uh, and so he, um, uh, rather than giving concessions and saying, uh, I will form a new cabinet, I will, uh, I will uh, uh, appoint a, uh, a, uh, a neutral prime minister rather than a brotherhood stooge, uh, who is probably the most hated prime minister in Egyptian history today. Uh, he went and he, uh, uh, he continued his defiance. And today, uh, Taylor and Thomas, he came out with this strange video that was recorded just before he, uh, he was um, ousted, I believe, or maybe just after he was ousted. Um, in which he said, I am the legitimate uh, president, and he kept talking in, in the present uh, tense, saying, I am the legitimate uh, leader of Egypt, and I, uh, and I would prefer to have dialogue, but he is, uh, I don't know, he's completely uh, delusional, uh, and I feel, uh, the, the ironic thing, uh, Tilo, is uh, Morsi is an eloquent speaker, Morsi is an educated leader, he's a PhD holder, the guy speaks fan fantastic Arabic, probably the best Arabic of any leader in the, in the Arab world. Uh, the guy is definitely educated. Uh, his only problem is his own friends were his, be were his best friends were his worst enemies. Why? That the, the Brotherhood smothered him. They wouldn't let him uh, uh, be a president for Egyptians. They, f they, they forced him into appointing advisors who were, uh, uh, who were Brotherhood, governors who were Brotherhood, ministers who were Brotherhood, ambassadors who were Brotherhood. Uh, endless, endless uh, stream of brotherhood appointments, um, reneging on their, on, their, uh, on their promises one after the other. It was a disaster. Every, Egypt was sinking deeper, deeper into hell. Every day these brotherhood uh, 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 people were, were in power. So we, so we take away, it's, uh, it's uh, probably a good thing that they're out, although it was still a military coup. Not, not necessarily it's a good thing that they're out, unless... No. Oh, not. Yeah. Oh, no, Why no, not. not not, not, not necessarily it's a good thing they're out. Well, um, initial euphoria 
uh, uh, people, including myself, are very happy to get rid of them to see the to see, to see their backsides. Uh, however, uh, there's been some worrying developments over the last uh, couple of hours. You had uh, media sta stations, including Al Jazeera, that was, and I predicted this in a tweet before yesterday, that would be shut down. Looks like Al Jazeera is, has a, has a uh, ticker saying that the that the uh, security forces came and shut down their channel in Egypt. Uh, some some journalists were arrested, and some Islamist uh, channels were shut down. Wow. And they were they were shut down uh, because uh, they they are accused of uh, inc inciting violence and sectarianism. However, I my personal opinion is this should be decided in a uh, in a in a in a process rather than ad hoc, because. Uh, who is the judge of this? Who's the judge of this process uh, uh, that you are inciting sectarianism? I I don't like it. I'm I, I'm personally a, 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 a secular uh, liberal. However, the Islamists must not be driven underground, and that's what we have to be very careful uh, of. The Islamists must be, especially in Egypt, they must be given a, uh, a platform. They must be partners. Uh, with the new Egyptian government, uh, they must be given uh, ministerial posts. They must be given ambassadorial posts. They must be given governor posts. Uh, you should you you should not exclude them as they had excluded everyone else. That's but, the mistake. But, but aren't they going to be super mad about the whole thing today? Oh, they're very mad. In fact, over the past uh, couple of hours, there's been uh, news that came out of Egypt for had died in clashes between opponents and supporters of the former uh, president in, in, Masrah, uh, in, in Marsa Matruh. You had, uh, you had uh, uh, clashes in, in other towns. You had um, ransacking, uh, 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 and you had, I think, uh, one or two deaths outside that area. So it's quite Gama uh, Islami ransacked uh, stores in Qina, and there were gunshots and clashes in Alexandria. That's literally a couple of hours after the... Uh, so I come back to the question which Tito tried to down. Um, is there, do we have to expect more violence in the coming days? Will there be an uprising or whatever of the supporters of the Muslim Brotherhood uh, after what happened? Um, hopefully not. However, uh, Morsi's statement, the one that he, was, he recorded on a mobile phone, um, he had said uh, he had said, "I am the legitimate president," and he did not call on his uh, supporters uh, not to not to uh, uh, go to the street and, and and say, "I will pursue legitimate means to to regain my presidency," which he probably has the right to do. But he kept it very open, and the, the incitement has continued, uh, and so it's very worrying. Um, the army had deployed uh, uh, along eastern Cairo, which is the most populated populated area, and Alexandria and other parts of Egypt. And so uh, the army and the military police might be able to, uh, to stop um, some violence, but I believe that it could get out of hand, especially because uh, it's not just the Brotherhood who are generally more politically savvy, but it's also the Gama'a Islamiyya, the, 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 the mm -hmm. Gama'a who is more militant, uh, who are probably trained, who have weapons. And remember, Tilo and uh, Thomas, uh, Egypt has had, uh, uh, there have been reports that a large uh, amount of weapons have been smuggled from Libya. And we all know what happened in Libya in 2011. A lot of these uh, weapons apparently found their way through the huge and porous border with Egypt. Wow. Thomas, um, that, that sounds, excuse me, so this sounds a little bit like a civil war might be a, a bad option, but still an option. I don't believe that there will be civil war in Egypt. In Egypt, you have a very strong military, uh, 500,000 strong. You have 500,000 reserve. You have 500,000 police. So you have a million and a half officers that you can call overnight almost that, uh, mm. that, can, that can preserve uh, security. And Egyptians are also, uh, I think they're, they're, they, they, they would not descend into this kind of civil war. At least this is, this is my, uh, my own reading. Of course, we saw what happened in Syria. Uh, had you asked me, I would have told you the Syrians are the same. Uh, however, uh, I hope that this time I am right. Thomas, uh, explain to us uh, how the West had, had thought of Morsi in the last two years. How, how have we treated him and how should the West treat uh, the, the military coup now? Well, uh, that's of course a, di a difficult point. With Morsi, the West has treated him with caution 
he wasn't as close as an ally as Mubarak had been before for, for a long time. Because, so, uh, because he was an Islamist? No, not necessarily, because uh, I think it was still evolving. They, they still had no real reading of him and, and of the whole government. Uh, so they, they were not uh, quite sure, let's say, is he on our side. Um, what comes now is a problem because, um, to, to make it clear, it was a simple example, the U.S. has by law no right to support countries where the legal government has been overthrown by a coup d'etat. We've oh. seen this in Mali. So the U.S., when, when France intervened in Mali, the U.S. were, were not able to, officially, they were not able to support this because they had no right to do anything there because the government had been overthrown. So, the, so, so, the, so, so they could all, uh, just say it wasn't a military coup, just pretend... It was well, a, everybody not. says it is a military coup, it's, it's, it's quite obvious. So it will still be to, to be seen how Western governments will react to this. And, and probably... And that's how, 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 how should they react? Well, I, I think at the moment uh, everybody has to wait how this sorts out. It's just too early to, 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 to have an idea what, what will come out of it, who will emerge as, as a legitimate government in this situation. Sultan, uh, last question before we come to some questions from our audience. Um, how, how, do you see, how do you see this whole democracy movement? Move, uh, how, do you, how do you think it's going to go on? And how do you think, there, uh, is there a way to get rid of the military? Like the, uh, I hope, the power of the military anytime I, I, I hope so uh, in fact the uh, the the the, the uh, how do you say the realization i think this is the french word the realization of the events of today were much better handled than 2011 what what the what the military uh, uh, the, the, the defense minister and the head of the military uh, said um, when he when he took to the podium he was surrounded uh, and this is in contrast to 2011 he was surrounded by the Coptic Pope, the the Sheikh of Al Azhar, the oldest institution, Islamic institution in Egypt, uh, uh, other uh, other Islamists, uh, women. Uh, um, so people from the there were uh, there were there were yeah lots of women around him who spoke as well. Uh, young leaders, cultural leaders, uh, religious leaders, political leaders. So uh, they were all surrounding him. So it looked like it was the the entire spectrum uh, of Egypt was represented. And this is something that was missing from the Brotherhood government. Um, and so if it continues this way, if it continues to be representative, and they include the Islamists, they have to include the, 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 the Salafis and the Brotherhood, the, uh, or else it will not work. But if they represent everybody, it will work. Uh, this is what I think. Thomas, do you have something else? Um, otherwise, we go to the questions. Let's go to the question from the audience. Okay. Um, first, from Facebook, Patrick Müller. They're probably all German sultans. So he asked, do you think it's possible to establish a real democracy in Egypt or is the power of the military dominating, like quick and dirty? Uh, we had it before. Um, I believe it's possible. Cool. Um, Marco asked, is there a potential and realistic danger that the military will continue to lay off presidents, perhaps even willfully, not, not, due, not due to people's protests? If, 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 can you say the question again? Sorry. Like, uh, is the military able able to overthrow any president in the future, uh, even when the when the people are not in favor of it? Uh, I think when the people are not in favor, it'll be much tougher. I think they can, uh, but ultimately, if the president is a representative, if the president uh, includes all uh, different factions of society, the Copts, Christians, I mean, uh, the Islamists. The liberals, the leftists, the uh, all sorts of people around around him or her, it's going to be much more difficult to oust that president than that is this person. So it, it, it always needs to be a popular push. I th uh, I think yes yes the push has to be popular for it to, to succeed from the military side. Um, Daniel, my friend Daniel asked, why should he care? He's German. Why shouldn't he in Germany care about all this? What do you think? 
oh, uh, Egypt is the number one, uh, is, the, is the biggest, uh, the most populous uh, Arab, uh, Arab state, has 85 million people. Uh, Egypt is the cultural center of the Arab world. All the, uh, the media, the music, the TV, the film, the, even the religion, everything's invented in Egypt and exported around the region. Uh, the, 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 is, uh, Islam, Islam was invented in Egypt? No, no, no. Uh, Islam was uh, Islam was uh, Islam came from uh, from Mecca in present-day Saudi Arabia. But okay. but the, all this Islamist institution is oh. in Egypt. Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, Alexander asks, what media outlets would you recommend to follow the developments after the breaking news part is over? Well, I would recommend that uh, that that you follow uh, different uh, uh, news uh, news outlets. For e this is for Egypt, Tyler, right? Yes. 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 For Egypt, I would recommend a, a new website that that launched just two days ago called Mada Masr, and maybe I'll email you the the, the links and you can post them. Yes. Tiro, Mada Masr sure. Tahrir Square. Uh, um, there's Egypt Independent. There's Jadalia. Uh, there's there's a bunch of websites. I think, and most of them are from Egypt. And they do a great job. Medan, Mas Medan, Mas so many. They should not be in Arabic because. Uh, oh, they're all in English. Uh, they're yeah. all in English. That, can, can you can you give us a tip how to um, how to uh, differentiate, especially when it comes to propaganda? Uh, I mean, just because we live in the West and, and read English English tweets or English news doesn't mean um, it's the right kind of news or the truthful news. Do you have any any way of uh, letting us know how to? Spot the bullshit. Um, I, I think I think that indiv individuals should read from both sides. I think that uh, it's healthy for you to read from uh, uh, the the leftists and the people on the on the right, just to be just to get a clearer picture. So, uh, and I, I feel that people are mature enough that they will make their own decision. Uh, however, these websites that I I, I recommended that I will email you in a link, uh, they they represent uh, to a large degree uh, varying uh, opinions. Okay. Even Al Jazeera English is a great uh, opinion. Uh, has a great opinion page. Although they didn't do uh, that good today, right? I, no, no. I, ch I checked different live streams, and yeah. Al Jazeera was no, the worst, no. I think. Why? No, why, no. why? Why would they do that? So that they, they, Al, Jazeera, Al Jazeera is known to be the mouthpiece of the Brotherhood. They they are the most sympathetic. Uh, their reporters, and and some of them are fantastic reporters, but their reporters are uh, known to be the most sympathetic. I mean, some of they just completely uh, threw out uh, uh, journalistic. Uh, uh, um, how do you say uh, standards when it comes to the Brotherhood, and they just repeat what they say and defend them. Uh, I wrote several articles on this on this issue, uh, and this is because the government that funds Al Jazeera is very close to the Brotherhood. And boy, did they bet on the losing horse! And and, and we are talking about Al, uh, Al Jazeera, also English, or is it Al Jazeera Arabic? No, no. In, in in general, the English channel is much better. Although the English channel has a couple of journalists who should move to the Arabic channel. But however, the uh, the the English the English version is fantastic, and the Arabic channel has some great journalists. However, the po the the policy of the of the uh, of the channel is is completely biased to the Brotherhood, and you could see uh, their entire uh, uh, feed today uh, is is very very pro Brotherhood. So, sounds like some German media outlets. Don't you think, Thomas? Uh, well, I won't comment on that. <laughs> I'll tell uh, you later. <laughs> Sensa, Sensa asks, what will happen to the Gaza border closure and siege now that the military is back? That's a great question. Actually, just uh, just a few days ago, the Americans uh, had uh, taken permission from the Egyptian uh, military to deploy uh, to deploy uh, uh, a number of troops uh, in, in case things uh, get out of hand in, in Egypt. Also, uh, uh, the, the, the 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 Brotherhood made sure that they keep the the, the Israeli border. Uh, under very uh, tight uh, control. In fact, the the, Israeli, the Muslim Brotherhood has been even uh, a better friend to Israel than the former military uh, uh, regime. What the, oh. what the brother? Yes, quite ironic if you think if you think about it. What they did was that they uh, they flooded. They literally put shit in the in all the tunnels. You know, there's, because there there are these tunnels that go. From the from the Gaza Strip to uh, to the Egyptian side, and the Brotherhood flooded all the on the Brotherhood the, the, the government in Egypt flooded the entire uh, tunnels everything they can find uh, so that they would open the border and uh, uh, and they thereby they did a huge service to Israel so Israel is quite was quite happy with with the Brotherhood 
and now they're now the Israelis are are happy because they have their old friends back in the military. Thomas, Thomas, does sound does that sound to you like uh, any other decade in, in the Middle East? No, not really. I, I think things like this have have repeated itself uh, over the last decades, but. Uh, no, the situation is, is fluent all the time and we, we'll have to see what comes out of it and hopefully, as Sultan said, uh, there will be no more or will be no violence or just a minor, on this minor scale as so far and and I hope that this will, will calm down pretty did, soon. Did, uh, did Morsi have any role uh, uh, in the Syrian conflict, Sultan? Oh, this is a great question, Tilo. Uh, just just Thank a few you. weeks ago, uh, what happened was uh, Morsi wanted to, uh, you know, show show uh, a little bit of uh, uh, ma macho-ness, whatever you want to call it, and he he conveyed this huge uh, s s uh, this huge conference or whatever, like this uh, forum that was uh, 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 um, on the surface to support the Syrian uprising. But what he did was that he wanted to uh, strut his feathers like a like a peacock. And then he came out and he made this crazy speech. Also, the speech was the speeches were full of sectarianism and hatred. But but the but he, he made this crazy speech in which he said the uh, the Egypt, including its uh, president, its people, and its army, stand with the rights of the Syrians. And so the military were like, "Say what? What are you talking about? Why are you volunteering us?" And so the next day, the military that were, who was pissed off uh, came out with a statement and they said, the Egyptian military will not get involved in foreign, uh, in foreign uh, whatever, wars and battles. And the Egyptian military's role is only to preserve uh, uh, the, the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the Egyptian soil and the, uh, uh, within the Egyptian borders. So that's what he said. Uh, and so that was the straw that broke the camel's back. The military put a big cross on Mercy just wow. after that day, yes. Wow. Yep. Uh, final questions from Twitter. Roland asks, uh, does, uh, does Sultan know anything about the new interim leader appointed by the military, Adli Mansour? Yes, actually we do, we do know. Uh, 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 first of all, he is uh, uh, he's the head of the Supreme Constitutional Court. Um, we know that uh, he's, uh, he, he was just appointed two days ago. He was, uh, he's married, he has uh, two daughters. Uh, he was born in, um, in 1945 um, and um, he, he seems to be a consensus figure. He was born in 1945 in December 23rd. He is, he is the sixth president of Egypt. Sounds uh, like Jesus. Actually, he has one son and two daughters. Uh, his name is Adli Mansour and he is the head of the Supreme Constitutional Court. Does he have any political affiliation, as far as we know? No, no not that I know of. I, I, I haven't, uh, I haven't okay. gone that deep into it. Why, why, why would they go for the, for the Supreme Court uh, guy? Be because, because the idea is that the Supreme Court judge is a neutral figure, a person who has objectivity, a person that is credible, a person that is apolitical, and that's why they, wanted to, uh, th that's why they appoint him. Plus, it is actually in the Constitution of Egypt that should the position of the president be vacated, then oh. the person that will fill it is the head of the Supreme Constitutional Court. And this is not just the only country in the world. Many oh. other countries have that provision. Okay. Is it true for Germany, Thomas? No. <laughs> With the no. exception to the rule. No, not necessarily. It's a little bit more complicated because the head of state is not the head of government, so we have a different construction here. Uh, another question from Roland. Uh, Zoltan. Uh, if the army will use increased violence from the Muslim Brotherhood and slash Gamma Islamia as a pretext for a crackdown on democracy? Um, I mean, hopefully not. I think, I think right now the onus is on people like al Baradi, uh, on the Sheikh of Al-Azhar, on the Coptic Pope, on all these people who stood up uh, and said we want to build an inclusive uh, government and an inclusive society they're the ones who should stand up and say that we will not take a crackdown on, uh, on, on these Islamists. And, and, and this is not because I'm pro-Islamist, but this is because uh, cracking down on them will drive them underground. And yeah. we saw what happened when you drove them underground in the past decades. That, that, that's, what, that's what I'm going to take away from this. Uh, that uh, It's important that Islamists uh, play a part in the new government. 
Yes, right? they ha they have to be given their fair share. They have to be represented. Uh, and and I and obviously one day if there are free and fair elections. Uh, they they uh, they should be also given their chance to to come back to power. Zaya, Zaya asked from Canada, uh, what will happen to the Sharia constitution? Oh, that's gone. That's finished. Cancelled today. A well, new what, constitution what's, uh, will be us. what's the Sharia constitution? I've never heard of that. Sharia is Islamic law. Uh, what, so, what's Islamic law? Uh, Islamic law is the law that, uh, that, the, that the Prophet, uh, the law that's taken from the Quran and the law that's taken from the, from the, the Prophet of Islam, Muhammad. So uh, you combine this and his teachings, you combine them together and you come up with Islamic law known as Sharia. Ah. And uh, the, the Muslim Brotherhood uh, uh, implement, uh, or they introduced a constitution that was heavily, heavily influenced by, by, by Sharia. Ah. Uh, they did that through, uh, the, through the parliament that they heavily controlled. And this is a bit complicated, I can, con I can explain to you why they control the parliament. But okay. uh, ultimately, uh, that constitution has been flushed down the toilet today. Okay. Julian wants to know, with the Brotherhood and Morsi out, Erdogan damaged, what are the re reverberations for political Islam in the region? Great question. Uh, Erdogan was their biggest supporter. Uh, and, uh, and obviously, Erdogan had his, had his, his earthquake uh, in the end of May and early June. His legitimacy is largely shaken. Uh, but but so, interestingly, so, so Erdogan pooped poop his pants tonight. Uh, I don't know if he pooped his pants. He's you know he's the he's the stronger party. Uh, however, he just lost uh, the, his biggest ally in the Arab world. So today, Erdogan has lost his biggest ally. And you're not just talking about any ally. You're talking about the headquarters of the Muslim Brotherhood International Organization. So the, oh. the, the, the Muslim brothers in the UAE, in Kuwait, in, uh, in Saudi, in Bahrain, in, uh, in Jordan, in Syria, in Palestine, in Tunis, in Libya, in Morocco, in Sudan, in Algeria, all these countries, they, they all uh, listen and they all adhere to the, to the, to the uh, teachings of the Muslim Brotherhood Supreme Guide. He's like the Ayatollah. He is a per and I actually met him, believe it or not. And wow. he, I'm, I think, one of the few people who met him from the Gulf. And he is a, uh, he is a 74-year-old uh, uh, individual. And then, he, so whatever he says, they follow. So losing Egypt is like cutting off the, 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 the head of, the, of, the, uh, of uh, whatever that animal. It won't survive. Okay. Uh, the, the Muslim Brotherhood will, will very, I think, it's very difficult for it to survive beyond today. Um, there's another question on Twitter. What does Sultan Al-Qasimi think about Hassan Shetata, uh, Shia, a Shia scholar, uh, his death, uh, about his death, and should mostly be sentenced as he let, uh, as he let them? Oh, Hassan Shetata, yes, yes. There was, there was, uh, there Tell was us a... About him. Well, the Hassan Shetata is, uh, is one of the, uh, uh, the minority uh, Shia uh, adherents in Egypt. So Egypt has a, a, an unknown uh, number of Shia. Uh, uh, some people say it's one percent, but when you say one percent in a country of 80 million, you're still talking of 800,000 people. So uh, a, a few weeks ago, there was this public lynching in which Hassan Shahata and I think three other people were tied and then they were dragged down the street with people jumping on them. And uh, uh, this happened under the watch of the Brotherhood. There were arrests made but this happened, Tilo, you remember the, 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 the Syrian support uh, uh, conference I mentioned? This yes. happened immediately after that sectarian uh, uh, Syrian support, uh, and there's nothing to do with the Syrians, this is, this is to do with the, uh, with the uh, bigoted uh, Islamists in Egypt, in which they were calling uh, the, the Shia uh, infidels and out of religion and enemies and using all sorts of uh, bad language against them. And so the next day, uh, some people were so charged up as soon as they heard that there was a Shia in the neighborhood, and he was a, a known figure because he was a spokesman for the Shia, uh, he was an activist. So they killed him and three others under the watch of the Brotherhood. And this made a lot of people uncomfortable in the region, especially at a time today where you have sectarian wars in, in, in Iraq and in Syria and the tension in Lebanon and Bahrain and elsewhere. Uh, Thomas, can you, can you tell us real quick what's the difference between Shiite and Sunnis? No, yeah, Zoltan can tell that much better than I could. Well, you, you, you're the German guy. Uh, tell, tell us. I won't even try while he's listening. Is it, is it, is it, Sultan, is it, like, is it like Catholics and Protestants? Yeah, more or less. There was a split that happened a few years after the Prophet died, and then uh, we never heard the, heard the end of it. it, it, oh, it, it uh, in the end, you worship the same God. 
uh, you know, it's like 99.9% .9 the same, but people love, you know, hanging on to these 0.1% differences. Uh, and it's, it's very much like Protestants and Catholics uh, in Ireland, but multiply by 1.5 billion. Wow. Well, uh, that were all the questions from, from the community. Um, thanks, Sultan, for uh, explaining to us what's going on in Egypt. Uh, Thomas, do, do we, did we forget anything? Anything important? No, I think we, we have to keep an eye on that and hopefully we'll see tomorrow in a few days what, what the likely outcome will be. And so also from my side, thank you very much, Sultan. That helped a lot in understanding what's going on. Sultan, uh, do we need to talk to each other again? Uh, is there anything else going wrong in, middle, in the Middle East? No, no, everything's fine. There's no problem. <laughs> cool, cool. Uh, Great. Uh, all right. Uh, let me, let me uh, cut off the live feed and then we can talk uh, afterwards. Okay. Hold on.